Welcome everybody to the DQ and Q Lifestyle Podcast with me, Marcus. Welcome back. Welcome back. Going mad out here. Welcome back. <laughs> Please like, comment, share, subscribe. You know it goes. Appreciate that ting, yo. Still under therapy ting. And what does it say here? So this is, because this is my end of therapy report, it's gone a bit to the end. So we'll start off at the beginning. It's got a bit to the end, but we're going to get to the middle. Um, so it says, outstanding needs. Well, should I say, in the outstanding needs and progression requirements slash recommendations, Mr. Brown needs to ensure he continues to self-reflect on a regular basis and to be aware of the areas which are risks, risks for him to ensure that his move to an open prison and the community is one which he can maintain and manage. It will be important that Mr. Brown not forget to look after himself and to think about things prior to undertaking them. Let me tell you something about that. <coughs> I know a man that did the thing. He just faked it anyway. He got recalled, did nine months there. Big up him. Not for doing the sentence, but big him up as a person. Uh, and next man, he did the TC. He was the guy that I've mentioned a few times that helps me along. Um... And in the end, while he's been in Cat D, he has been on a police chase and got kicked out of Cat D. And I don't know what's happening to him now. Inshallah, he gets that soon. Um, he's a good guy, but he just gets influenced. His, his thing is peers. His main um, outstanding need, I would say, is peers. He falls into whatever, whatever circumstance you put him in, he becomes really good at it. So put him in front. He's in the road things. So he was like a... a Good road man, do you know what I mean? Put him in jail, he was a good jail guy. Put him on the TC and he was a proper therapeutic and super therapeutic to death. Do you know what I mean? Absolute nightmare with his therapy. Like, boom. And I turned into a nightmare, probably even a bigger one than him. Because uh, I did take some inspiration off him, beat him up. But now obviously he's gone back to the, like, the true jail after that. And then obviously he's once again become, he's just a chameleon. Do you know what I mean? Which is not a bad thing. But it just shows that he needs to make sure that he puts himself in good circles to maintain his chameleon as people have called me a chameleon when I was in um um in open conditions and it's not for the not in like bad terms it's because it's like it's like Marcus listen anywhere you go you just seem to like fit in so it's like boom you'll be with like down there with a the road man and you're like oh road manish and then you'll be down over there like with like the like not the nerds but like the man the nerds fuck it you're over there with the nerds nerding do you know what I mean? <laughs> because you're around the screws and you're screwing <coughs> Because you're around those Northeasters and you're Northeasting, do you know what I mean? He goes, Oh, you're in the, uh, what was going to college to give me and him from the prison? Is that you're in the prison, uh, in the college and you're just one of them, do you know what I mean? <laughs> like, you just pop, 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 like, yo. Uh, but I think possibly part of that is just through being mixed race, you know? Um, just being of two things anyway, do you know what I mean? Like, you see in this, like, English culture and then you see in this, uh, Jamaican culture do you know what I mean it's just like boom boom that kind of thing maybe that um, I don't know right, who else is my example who else is my example oh geez, another guy he was like teeter tottering but he became alright ish on the TC like he was a good guy all the way through as a person but as it's for like therapy wise he was like up and down and getting into like almost fights and that which is not it's not a big deal in jail but it's a big deal on the TC you know the ones there because we're supposed to use our words Learn to use our words. Just the reason that you're fighting is because there's no solution being found. Do you know what I mean? It's workable for both parties. So it's just this reaction of this from this feeling. <coughs> yeah, man, is still ill, brother. Um, so I hope you got a mask on while you're watching. <laughs> um, what else? Yeah, so anyway, he's gone to a fucking, from the TC, he got signed off. If you got signed off, it's basically, you're good to go, in a sense, because not everyone gets signed off. There's a very low percentage. I won't even say probably 10% or maybe about 10% of people get signed off. In in the group that's there, because it's obviously it's continuously ebbing and flowing, like people are coming and going, whether they're getting signed off, leaving of their own accord, or, or kicked off, like voted out. Or like security's coming and saying, go, you need to, just taking them, because they're getting kicked out of the jail, they're out of the fucking, off the wing. Um... Yeah, so he's just gone to Cat D, he's just, uh, sorry, Cat C, he's just fighting, I don't know if he got Cat D, he got out and he got recalled, do you know what I mean? So it's not like you do therapy and you're done, because it's not, 
it's nothing that's, it's not, it's a mindset. Do you know what I mean? So if you've got the old mindset, but you're just like kind of blagging it or you're acting, then it's just, that's, you're just being you. Do you know what I mean? So it's not something that's like done for you. Like, I can't explain it. Basically, like, like the talking, just like, you just took some hair and like, oh, now I'm fixed. Oh, yes, everything. I've got a pure, proper positive outlook of life. And yes, I don't even know what I was like before. Like, <laughs> like no, it's a mindset. Do you know what I mean? So it's changing it. Like I say, it's like having morals or it's changing your value system. Like I used to value <coughs> what the man then thought of me more than anything else. Do you know what I mean? More than family. And it's only when I'm there now. And luckily, I've got it like this. Like, where I'm just in a group of lads that don't look after you when you're in prison. They don't reach out. Where there's other people that are in prison, they get looked after to death by the boys. So I would have found it harder, I guess, to break free from them because they're doing so much for me. Because I couldn't believe what type of boy certain man had. Like, yo, man, I just... Travelling all over the country to make sure parcels and that sort of, and this and that, and bloody, bloody, blah, and sending bear cashing and this and that, and red to say it's just all mad. Like, you couldn't, like, it was just mad. Do you know what I mean? Whereas, like, in my thing, if you're in prison, like, you're on your own. That's it. Do you know what I mean? So, luckily, luckily, I had it like that. Do you know what I mean? Alhamdulillah, that that's how my thing was patterned. So, it's like, when I'm looking back now, it's like, who's reaching out to me? Like, my mum, dad, and missus. Do you know what I mean? So, then to value these people. Do you know what I mean? But yeah. That's it. Let's move on. <laughs> <coughs> Which, you know, I always talk about, so again, I can just see there, not to forget to look after himself and to think about things prior to undertaking them. I am thinking I'm a bit close to this. It's making me feel a bit sick. Do you know what I mean? In my ears, like, you know, it's loud. Um... Think about things prior to undertaking them. So you know my style already, where I'm just saying, literally on the last one, uh, no, it wasn't the last one, it was the uh, pod before, where I'm on about, you know, just being somewhere, and so I'm popping up, and then just chatting to me, this and that, and then some pull-up gang just pulls up and just like, gets on them and they're on me because I'm with them and da 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 Like, you know, I'm constantly thinking about these things, don't go out, like it just, not say it is like that out there, but I'm not even giving it room to breathe. You know, them ones there, like, because, like I say, if nothing happens, then that's fine. But if something does happen, like, there's a lot to lose now that I wouldn't have been bothered about before. Do you know what I mean? But this is where it is. And I'm happy with the life I'm living. Do you know what I mean? To a degree, like, obviously, it's not 100% perfect, but it never will be. Do you know what I mean? I think that's what people get twisted. People like searching for this perfect lifestyle, but it doesn't work like that. The fact that we're human, life, it just goes up and down. We have our ups and our downs in, like, many things. Do you know what I mean? So... I mean, that's just the comfortability that we have to find ourselves, uh, find ourselves within. But it's also controlling what we can control, <coughs> and not being around things too much that make us feel down. Do you know what I mean? Um, so, like me being on my own all the time, it's like yeah, there's loneliness there and that. But I can entertain myself. Do you know what I mean? It's having hobbies. It's having uh, things to look forward to. It's having things to do. Do you know what I mean? Making yourself busy. I like, could not just rely on other people or other things to make me busy, like, you know what I mean? You know I'm talking about the drugs and the fucking alcohol. Anyway, participation and responsivity to treatment. Mr. Brown engaged well in therapy. He was very active throughout his time in therapy, continually seeking out areas of issue for himself to reflect on and understand at depth. He engaged well with staff and was able to think about what roles they symbolised for him in his internal world. So yeah, obviously it's that thing of that looking out, looking in kind of thing. So the internal world is the in. You know what I mean? So yeah, and like I said uh, on the last pod about like I, I've said it a few times. Like I literally, like even at the the, the therapy, the therapist who wrote this, uh, Kira, she said, "Listen, she goes, you've like left no stone unturned in your life. I mean, I don't, you don't have to. You could just look at your offending behavior, and you've still got loads of other aspects of life like." Family, partner, um, you know, relationships, fucking, just whatever else. Do you know what I mean? It's loads of different things. But I turned it all over, looked, looked at everything. <coughs> right, so we're going to look at the first domain, which I mentioned on the last pod, which is the antisocial attitudes slash offence supportive beliefs. I mentioned the ones that I've got, which are antisocial. Well, I had, um, and, well, that I identified as a need for me. 
um, as something to look at. So antisocial slash anti-authoritarian attitudes, denial and minimization, criminal peers, and lack of empathy, callousness. So it just says how it was identified of I was I was identified as having risks in this domain at the assessment stage of therapy. And uh, so what it says is antisocial slash anti-authoritarian attitudes. And then it's got one, two, three, four, five, six bullet points, which read Marcus has seven previous convictions with his first happening when he was 18 years old. Marcus has carried weapons in a number of his convictions. Carrying weapons, which is an illegal action, shows a readiness or preparedness to engage in violent behaviour. This clearly shows an antisocial attitude and behavioural pattern. Marcus previous offences includes ones for driving, the possession of cannabis and another for a violent act. These all show an antisocial behavioural style, uh, which will be in place due to an antisocial attitude. Marcus pleaded guilty to his index offence, which shows a more social response to an antisocial behaviour. Marcus has engaged really well in his social group and in the community meeting since his time on Endeavour. He has spoken about his use of violence in a small group, sharing how he feels weak in a situation. Then his impulse has been to hurt the other person more, using violence to do so. Marcus has shown no issues related to anti-authority since he started on Endeavour. Endeavour was the name of the wing that was on, and engages well with stuff. <coughs> oh, story about the coffin, man's mashup. Mm, it's that time of year. So yeah, so when I first read this, I'm thinking, not not this this exact one, but like because you, you you all look the same basically. Do you know what I mean? But it does having the others like what how you've moved on. Oh, it's got it here. Um, alhamdulillah, because obviously you have a, a board. It's called a board. So you have a therapy board or a re review board every six months once you're inducted in that after your assessment if you get the place because you'll have your assessment and then your community will vote you in including staff so cons and staff will vote you in or vote you off and it's just a count then that how much so there's 40 people 40 cons plus like six or seven staff or whatever um and then it comes down to majority vote so just say there's six staff 40 uh, cons that's 46 people if there's 24 four and 22 against then obviously it's the no twenty two, again uh, four and twenty four against. Then you're off. And it's just like one person in it or two people in it. <coughs> and I can't remember what happens if it's like a 50, 50, 23, 23. But it gets sticky sometimes, and it's crazy how people vote because people will vote. There's bare dynamics. You just learn about dynamics. I tell you straight, it's the, the therapy, the therapeutic. Um, this fucking wing, yeah, it's just such a microcosm of life. So the reason for the voting is because it's a democratic... Um, so it's not a democracy. It's a... What's it called? So it says it in the name, and it? it's democratic therapeutic communities because it's having a vote, it's having a voice. Do you know what I mean? It's like your vote matters. So maybe not your one, but your one might be the one that tips it over the edge. Do you know what I mean? Because we vote for literally everything. Jobs on a wing, normally like a wing job, you just put in for it and you get it. Or like you might have got someone that you know on the wing and then like, I just say I'm a wing cleaner and someone comes on that I know and I'm like, yo, like, Mr. Smart, yo, get my one on. Like, trust me, it's all right, man, it's cool. And because Mr. Smart knows I'm cool and you want people that kind of about it a little bit on the on the cleaning so you're not a little mug and that people can't take the piss out of you and, that, and, and so you can kind of drop bars on, man, if you need to drop bars on, man, you know, the one's there. And obviously you have it easy. <coughs> <coughs> and, um, right, that coughing just, <laughs> I think I almost passed out there, do you know what I mean? But yeah, so, but we don't do that on the, uh, in the therapy, on the therapy uh, prison. You'd vote people in the jobs, you'd think, right, that person needs to be like, so there'd be a chair of the meetings, a chair and a vice chair. And you'd be like, we need a chair. He needs to be a chair because that person hasn't got a voice. So to, for him to be the chair, because then they've got to like, when the meeting's getting mad, you know, got people arguing about some mad shit, he needs to be like, here, here, not like fucking, like the guy on um, Question Time, I forgot what his name is now. The man who sits on the big chair and he's like, hey, 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 hey. Do you know what I mean? Labour, conservative, chill out. <laughs> a bit like that, do you know what I mean? And they've got the vice chair next to him. The vice chair's got like the little book of like agendas and shit and specials and da 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 da. And they'll be like, all oh, right, uh, today's the agenda uh, that Marcus and Paul uh, had an argument by the fucking microwave. Uh, yeah, anybody else take it away? 
And the, that's what the vice chair said. Like, anyone want to take it away? Marcus? <laughs> okay. Why me? Why me? What about him? <laughs> I never took part in madness like that. <coughs> or had them responses. I was too scared at first. I was trying to fit in socially. Do you know what I mean? It's funny how like your behaviours just kick in naturally and, where you, and you're just doing... Obviously, when I was like super like agitated, I would go there, but there'd be certain people that kick off straight from the get-go because that's how they are. Um, so, yeah. Um, yeah, having that... But I can't remember what it's called now. Democratised. They said, no, it's not a democracy, it's democratised. Because at the end of the day, the screws had the final vote if things weren't going well. If they thought, nah, 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 fuck that. Steve needs to leave. They'd overrule our... Because where it is in the end of it, our 40 votes counted as one. <laughs> and the individual screws, like so st uh, off the staff, six of them just say, they six, them six staff counted as six individuals and our one. So just say, so like I said, the dynamics would be like, there might be a guy that's just super on drugs, he's smashed and that, yeah, but the screws aren't really seen him, but like people have seen him. So I'd always vote him in. But there's certain people that's not having that, voting them out. So I'm thinking, yo, stay and do the work. Get off the drugs. The drugs aren't going to fucking do nothing for you. They're not doing nothing for you. They put you in this position now, which is a negative. I mean, this is just a, repli uh, a replication of what's happening in life. Like, stay, do the work, your own work. Not people put it on you. Like, yo, you're taking drugs. You need to do this. Be like, yo, do you know what? I'm on drugs. Like, I need to... <coughs> the reason is because of this, you know, I grew up like that, da, 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 and I turned to this then at this age at 13, I started doing these drugs, and then from there I started chumming these guys, and from there I started taking it. Do you know what I mean? Do that work there, just do that build up on your own back. Do you know what I mean? Because that'll work wonders for you. People don't want to own up to it, because obviously we've got a fear of being, seeing our, what we've done wrong, don't we? Because we're, cause of consequence. Do you know what I mean? We're conditioned by our parents that, like, when we do something wrong, we get hit. Then it's in school, you do something wrong, you get sent out. Or you get lines, or you get fucking excluded, or whatever. Like, or you admit something wrong to a police officer, you're going to prison, or you're going to the cells. You admit you've done something wrong in court, and, you, and you're going to get fined, or like you're going to go to prison. A hundred. So, we're conditioned to not want to be honest, open and honest. But on here, it's different, and it's hard to break that mould for you to step across that, like, doing something different. Like, stay on this side, and it's always what you've always done, and what most people do is lie and deny. Do you know what I mean? But for you to take that step over, and to understand and to just challenge yourself because it's, it's a challenge to step over that line and be like yeah I've, I've been taking drugs or you know what I did say that do you know what I mean taking that accountability is massive bro massive your world will just go boosh a big bang theory I open a spread out so I saw them say it's like a bomb <laughs> <laughs> you know what I mean but anyway <coughs> So, so, just said he's like someone that Steve smashed on wing and that, but he's been supplying other people. So his little like fingers will look round and they might vote him in like, yeah, well, I think Steve should stay because, uh, you know, he's a good guy in that. And da, da, da. and there's something like these people that's dropping it basic like that. Where there's other people that'll be like, that guy that I said that I, that was a role model for me. I had several role models. One of the Birmingham man, this youth that I said had a police chase when he got to the open prison, got sent back to closed prison. Um, my pad, my next door neighbor. We didn't have no padmates. We were only single cells. My next door neighbor, sorry. Um, one of the officers, Dean, who was the group two facilitator. Uh, and I think they were like the main ones, the main ones. So I probably say I got my decision making from my next door neighbor. I got my um, seriousness for therapy off the guy that I said run off. We call him the money guy. He's from Manchester from the money guy, uh, the Brummie was the first one that I thought that allowed me to take that step into it to be like the money guy. So the Brummie guy got me like the money guy because I seen him like first and uh, the screw, <coughs> <coughs> he probably drew out my um, sensitivity and caringness and, and my um, change on lifestyle because of how he was uh, and it was very, 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 very articulate. Um, so yeah, anyway, back to the dynamics of stuff. So this is me learning about dynamics in, in these moments, yeah? These votes we voted quite often about certain things. Um, and so a lot of men that had vote for Steve to stay, Madman Steve that's on drugs, yeah? That's just blatantly fucking up the wing because he's like, because he, it creates, uh, just like how it does in the communities out here because it's called a community. The wing, we don't call it a wing, we call it a community. Do you know what I mean? 
Because it's to develop these like this language within you for you to start to care about your community. Um, your community is out here, which I do. Obviously, you know me, you know my thing. Anyway, so all the people that he's supplying are saying he want, want him to stay. But really, you should want him off. Do you know what I mean? Not just him, everyone should want him off. That's the general thing, because we're supposed to be repulsed by drugs and um, and uh, drug use. Do you know what I mean? We're supposed to be repulsed. Do you know what I mean? So that's showing like the highest of like therapeutic thingy. But like dynamics come to come into it. So obviously, the people that are either his drug taking buddies or his uh, customers are gonna go into like that natural thing of dynamics to show like, oh no, I want him to stay because they're trying to not get you know on a bad side of him. Because people obviously was good in cells and saying stuff for people threatening people. I don't think people are really getting hurt like that. <coughs> um, so it shows that dynamic. So that points that out like boom. So what they're doing is like kind of thinking, oh, rah, you're on drugs. I'd want them in because I want to stay to do the work. So people might be thinking, what? Marx is on drugs. <laughs> um, or sometimes people that are on drugs would go against, if they've seen a lot of people going against people like looking. Because that was like a heavy hitter on there. So they'd be looking at like, see how I vote. Or like they see someone speak and they can't see and then they look and think, oh, that Marcus. Do you know what I mean? So me, the brummy, the manny, and my next door neighbour, we're like heavy hitters on there. There was a few of them. There was a few heavy hitters. But like people that had like influence, it turns out. I didn't really know the man had influence at the time. It was only afterwards when the guy that's been on there for like 18 months before me is like, yo, you and you and my next door neighbour is like, you two came and changed the game, man. It's like before you two came, it was like, if we saw, saw like in the room, it's one thing. So it's like, there was no congruence. Where in the room, people are like super therapeutic and displaying all this stuff. And then outside, man, are still trying to like, yo, you know what I mean? Shutting the... Obviously, me and my man's come, and my neighbour, like, obviously, we've got like a house on fire. Yorkshire lads and that, and da da da, he's from Leeds. Um, in the room, we're seeing man on some next wave and that, like on some mad thing. We're thinking, yo, do you know what? This is kind of the step forward. Like, because we're kind of done with that lifestyle. Like, the lifestyle that we was leading, living, he was like, I'm off it because... I'm on the like a uh, fast track to being in jail for a time, like getting out and going straight back in and doing way more time and just being on that cycle. And he's on his kid thing, like he's just oh, and I got like how to father properly off him, off my neighbour, yeah, the leads man. He is on the next wave when it comes to fathering. Do you know what I mean? I've never seen on a road thing. I've never seen a father like that that's so like involved. Do you know what I mean? <coughs> <coughs> But anyway, yeah, so you can just see the dynamics of people like who would vote who out and, and there's things like that. And people like, um, that are just copying like me. If I vote someone out, they'll vote them out. Or if I vote them in, they'll vote them in. Because they've got no like mind drawn because they're just copying, the th they're doing what they think people will do. Do you know what I mean? Um, or just a group of people that will just vote anti what, what certain people vote or there's just a lot of dynamics. You just learn so much. It's like I say, it's just a microcosm of the world and how things work and just getting up, just getting understanding is just mad. Mad. Um, yeah, so the next one is criminal peers. In Marx's index offence, the weapon he was carrying was originally being carried by a friend of his, which we know is not true. It was mine. And it was on me from mine. I got it from my yard. I bought it a couple of days before. You know what I mean? When Marcus learned his friend had the knife, he took it from him. This action shows Marcus had connections with other people who had similar anti-social uh, ways as himself, which it did. Um, I did, sorry. I did have fingers on the right there. Even though they're wrong in that instance, they're right overall, or generally. <coughs> <coughs> Beg your pardon. It also shows Marcus protecting a friend at the expense of himself, which is another thing that people like us do, isn't it? We protect people over the expense of ourselves. It would be really good for Marcus to explore this during his time in therapy in his Oasis, which is an, um, I think it's an offender assessment system report, what do you call it, an Oasis, O-A-S-Y-S. Um, it states that Marcus made a conscious effort to stay away from people who might lead him into trouble when he was younger. Which is true in a way. Uh, Marcus's convictions are all ones which he committed on his own, so his offending isn't directly linked to others. So they wasn't they wasn't too too bothered about me doing that work there, but I did that work because it shows that like obviously I'm because remember we're doing index offence based stuff. So even if I had a murder before, just went into jail, did my jail, got out, 
and came back in on some armed robbery charge, they'd be more bothered about the armed robbery charge because that's what he came in for. That's what the, what the folks would be. Did like it if you mentioned that and you did the work on the murder. We don't have to because you're coming to you're going to do the work on that offence. But like I said, I did work on that offence, my previous offence, my whole fucking life. <laughs> My whole fucking life, you know what I mean? Um, my leads, mate. I'm like, oh, Marcus, don't come in here with your, on your enlightened elephant. Because <laughs> ah, here he is on his elephant. Look at him. <laughs> but yeah. <coughs> so there's not really too much to comment on that, really. Except that's a big one. Protecting a friend at the expense of himself. So the reason I uh, attacked the... Um, well, the reason I had the altercation on my first offence is because although my brother led me to believe that he had a fight with this guy that I ended up beating up, it wasn't for my brother, it was for my mum. Because my mum is susceptible to try and attempt to take her own life due to her sons being injured or harmed because it's like it's overwhelming that life's going to get on him. She always thinks that something's going to happen to us because she just thinks that we're just, obviously we're our kids in it, so she thinks the world's too much for us and the world's going to get on top of us. But in a sense, it was, the world was too much for my, um, not like I'm Superman or anything. I don't know, go off like it sometimes, you know what I mean? Hey, you know, I said it, Leo, imagine <laughs> But, um, yeah, them two, like a bit, like, as much as I love them, they are like sausages a little bit. So when they're growing up in the, in the ends, you know, people are getting onto them, like, differently. Um, and they're not doing no about it. They're coming and complaining to me. It's mental. So, yeah, we all have that propensity. Like, if you're talking to my boy the other day, and, uh, you know, he did a mad thing, and he's ended up going to jail, and he knows that he went to jail basically protecting his mate. Well, our mate, you know, the ones there. But it's not like our mate can't protect himself. Our mate sticks his neck out all the time to protect the rest of us. Do you know what I mean? A few of them, you know what I mean? That's what we do. Everyone crosses over and that's just what these roads are like, you know what I mean? When you're getting back people and you're protecting people because like when you're protecting other people, it's like you're protecting yourself as well. Do you know what I mean? So yeah, so that's that bit. We'll move on to denial and minimisation. Whilst Marcus did plead guilty to his index offence, he denied using a knife and was shocked to learn the extent of the injuries of the victims. Marcus has not shown any signs of denying or minimising his index offence or behaviours in general since he started on Endeavour. So yeah, <coughs> like denial, um, well denial is just not admitting it, isn't it? Do you know what I mean? Just denying it, that's just denial. Um, I think that gets confused as well, like when you say, oh, you're in denial. It's like you're trying to say that someone, like people interpret that as like a mental health issue, a bit like, like, but it's like, if you're not admitting it, you are denying it, therefore you are in denial. <laughs> But denial is like so synonymous with, like I say, it's like this mental health thing, which it is a mental health thing. It is, in my opinion. My humble opinion. I am the humblest. But you already know that I am the baddest at being humble. I'm the wickedest. You get me? The most humble sufferer, anyway. Um, and minimization is like when you say just. I just, just, I just give him, just give him two jokes. You know what I mean? Yo, what man? I just fucking hell. What well, I just just give him like a little slap, man. Do you know what I mean? The just is to make it like just not I slapped him. I just slapped him. Do you know what I mean? Like I stabbed him. So, yeah, just, just give him a little jump, man. Like <laughs> that's to make it smaller. Do you know what I mean? To minimize it. So it's to you take that language away, like the justs, do you know what I mean? And the buts. Do you know what I mean? Well, the book's more for justification. Do you know what I mean? I stabbed him, but it's because he like was like talking to me in a certain way. It's like, no, forget all that. You stabbed him. You get me? Uh, so anyway, so that's this is like a recap of the work that's been done. It says time in therapy. I believe it is. I haven't read this for time, so we're kind of reading it for the first time. You're reading it for the first time. I'm reading it for the first time in a few years. <coughs> so I believe this to be a bit of recap, and this is the point of this therapy, because it's the end of it now. But it's what the work I did on, on the stuff that I've just mentioned. I don't think it mentioned them all though. It didn't mention lack of empathy, the lack of empathy and callousness for some reason. Mr. Brown explored his index offence and previous offences at length, told you. Uh, and in depth during his time on therapy, he explored his engagement in gang cultures prior to coming to prison, identifying that gangs gave him a sense of identity and belonging which he lacked in his family home. It 
also supported him to gain status amongst his criminal peers and fed into his image issues, wanting to be seen as tough and powerful. Mr. Brown explored the use of violence and how he previously would have turned to using violence easily. He shared that he has used his fist as a defense mechanism, sorry, as a defense against his feelings of shame, embarrassment, fear, and anxiety which would be present. He also shared that he would want those who evokes those sorry, these feelings in him to hurt to great extents. Mr. Brown took responsibility for his actions in his index offence and did not show signs of justification. Mr. Brown related well to the staff team for the most part during his... For the most part, you know. Because uh, a bit mad at the beginning still, but you know. But then again, it got a bit mad at the end as well, but, but for different reasons. Uh, which I can get into and I probably will, because you know me, I can <laughs> Um... For the most part, during his time on Endeavour, he made conscious efforts to learn, to relate to them, and he often offered him work related to his previous experience of prison and police staff, as well as his own relationships with previous caregivers. Mr. Brown explored his relationships with criminally minded others, which he had prior to coming to therapy. He shared that he felt a sense of connection and belonging to these characters. He also spoke about no longer needing or wanting to relate to these types of people, which you can tell from every single pub middle because me cussed him that. <laughs> but I'm not cussing the people. It's the behaviour. It is the behaviour. Because the person that I am now, people that meet me now will be like, oh, Marcus is this, Marcus is that, Marcus is the other. Marcus is humble. But, Adding a few mad behaviours and that's changing. Do you know what I mean? If I start doing mad things, you know, them ones there. Like, so it's the behaviour that I'm not condoning. But people identify, people not just identify with uh, their behaviour. It's not their fault. It's because they're told by parents, caregivers and teachers. So at a small age, you are being learned. You are naughty. No, the child is not naughty. It's not the child that is naughty. The behaviour is naughty. If the child didn't do that thing, then the child wouldn't be naughty, would they? Do you know what I mean? So it's not a naughty child. What they did was not good. And you need to explain to the child that what you just did is not good. Not tell them that you are not good. You weren't good. You were naughty. You will get smacked. Do you know what I mean? Which I don't advocate for any hitting of any child, me. Because you can explain to them. I'm telling you. Um, so <coughs> Yeah, where was I? Can't remember if I can hear. Mr. Brown explored relationships with criminally minded others, which he had to prior to his therapy. He shared that he felt a sense of connection and belonging to these characters. He also spoke about no longer needing or wanting to relate to these types of people. So, yes, also, sorry. So, when people are getting, like, upset, like, just say I do say something, especially, like, me on this pod, uh, saying stuff about, like, certain behaviours, where it's about, like, the road man thing or the certain girl that man link and blah, 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 like, mothers and whatever, da, 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 dads even. Like, you know, if I'm saying these things, it's not you, but you identify with that behaviour that I'm talking about. And that's why you're taking offence. Because it's not about you particularly. It's about your behaviour. Now, what is of a behaviour? A behaviour is a choice. So you can choose to do that behaviour or you can choose to do that behaviour. That's not a good one and that's a better option. So that's why I get onto the behaviour because it's the behaviours that we can change. Do you know what I mean? You change your behaviours, you have changed as a person. Do you know what I mean? And it's constantly like, rather than, so when you're feeling that thing or when that thing happens, your response is to go to the new behaviour rather than to the old one. So if I've got like a couple of things that are like a, a bit of an issue for me, and just say five things are an, an issue for me and I act, the, the, the choice that I make when that thing happens or when I feel a certain way for these five different things, so when I'm spoken to in a certain way, if someone's late or something, if the kids are bad and I've got like, na like nasty reactions all the, like for all five things, if I look at each thing, I can choose a different way of dealing with that, something that's going to get me the same or similar outcome. So if I was to say to the kids, shut your fucking mouth now! Like, I obviously want them to shut up, that's what I want. That's the goal, that they might shut up, but I'm traumatising them. Do you know what I mean? And that's not going to be no good when they get up, get older. Because they won't respond to that will. 
possibly. They're either going to be like really meek or really horrible and they possibly will do that themselves because they haven't, they don't know how to shut people up. But I could go to that child and speak to them and say, listen, come on, we need to calm down a little bit. Da, 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 da. Or I can like, entertain them for a little bit. Oh, what's going on here? What are you doing? Oh, is that what you're doing? Are you playing on this yet? Oh, can I play for a little bit? Yeah, boom, boom, boom. What we want to do is keep it down a little bit because da, 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 da. And obviously if I've been around them for a while, I can say, oh, do you remember that time when such and such were a bit loud, it was doing your head in a little bit. Let's like, keep it down a little bit because it's like it's getting on towards a little bit. Do you know what I mean? Boom, boom, boom. And that's the conversations that I'm saying to have. Do you know what I mean? <coughs> Rather than having these explosive uh, outcomes. But I'm understanding things a little bit different as well, especially in terms of like, uh, people being stressed, people having burnout, people having like their hormones uh, being just all over, um, and obviously things taking a, a toll on that, like um, this medication. So yes, yeah, so I'm I'm learning still. I'm still learning. Um, anyway, Mister Brown, that's his name. Mister Brown, yeah, that's his name. So anyway, once again, he also spoke about no longer needing or wanting to relate to these types of people and he shared that he realises how detrimental such peers are to him. Mr Brown developed positive and healthy relationships with others on the community during his time in therapy. He spoke about the importance of his peer relationships on the community and how they supported him to understand himself better and to identify what he might need in relationships. So what you can probably tell from all of this, from especially what you just said there in the end bit, um, it's gaining an understanding, but it's not just uh, it's not just like a little light understanding. It's a it's a deep understanding. Do you know what I mean? And then from this understanding, it's giving me choice. Like, oh, so right, okay. So those people have a bunch of bad tendencies. So when I'm there, I want to fit in and have and adopt these bad tendencies or bad behaviors. Let's call them. And it gets me X, Y, and Z. But if I don't really want to be around that group of people with those bad behaviours or with those behaviours, I want to do this. So when I'm not around that, I don't have to do the stuff to fit in there. So I can do what? And then it's like a exploration of what can I do? And because there's so many people there, we're always talking, constantly talking, whether it's in our own groups, they didn't be like feedback after so all groups will come back down into the community space and then they, like one person will give feedback on what happened in their group. So you're getting that learning there. And then there'll be the group meetings, which were like several types of ones. Um, then obviously you then could just go speak to people on your own, uh, in your own time and speak to the officers and stuff and, and the council and whatnot to get a bit of a bit more uh, knowledge. Um, so it's exploring, it's constantly exploring like what, what and why. What, where, why, when, who, do you know what I mean? Like, what can I do? What can I do? Oh, I can do that. How can I do it? How do I get there? How do I get to, like, where I want to be? Like, what, what is it that I have to do next? Like, how how can I get there? So, right, then you're, you can, that's what, you want to do the same as me, but you have different opportunities because you're not from the same part of the country as me. You're not the same age as me. You're not the same colour as me. So, we've all got, like, our pros and cons. So, okay, how are you going to get there? They're going to do this, this and this. So he's going to do three steps and that'll get him there. Okay, then, boom. I can do step two. His step two is my step one. But I think I've got to take five steps to get to the same thing he wants to due to him having a higher uh, education level than me. So I've got to do level two and then level three. So these are the steps I've got to do to be able to get there. Like, so you know what I'm saying? So it's like, it's just constantly like growing and, and like I said, then it becomes like a behavior then because then it's like, it becomes like a goal and... and uh, something to focus on, do you know what I mean? Because a lot of the things in the road, things like it's just unfocused madness, do you know what I mean? There's mindless behaviour. But yeah, that's that bit. We're going to end that there. Uh, big up yourselves, you know what I mean? I respect everyone that uh, watches this. Um, yeah. Like, comment, share, subscribe. You know what I mean? Share it all over social media, my man. Share it, share it, share it, share it, man. And yeah, that's it. Stay tuned for the next one. All right, Marcus, the Q Lifestyle Podcast. <laughs>